Hello, Chris Menard here. I've got a great video in Excel, but I do want to tell you what I have coming up. Microsoft Outlook 2016 with an Office 365 subscription has got four new changes. And I'm going to pull up Outlook just for a second because I'm going to cover this in another video. One change is Outlook will read your emails aloud. At first I thought, who cares, but I've actually been using this. Another change is your calendar. Instead of having just two time zones, you can show multiple time zones. You can also have your inbox emails that you delete be marked as unread automatically. And there's a fourth change that I'll show you, but that'll be another video. Back in Excel, let me show you how to show distinct values. I'm going to do it twice, once with just clients, the second time with clients and products. So here we go. I'm going to do it with the pivot table and it's not going to work and you'll see why it doesn't work. Insert pivot table. It picked up A1 through A12, which is perfect. New worksheet. Perfect. Click OK. I'm going to check client name and then I'm going to drag client name down to values. I've got 11 total but I have 11 here. If I double click B3, I scroll down. Notice at the very bottom down here, it does not say distinct. It says VARP. I'm going to hit cancel. So that one didn't work. So let me delete that one. So when you make that pivot table, the key is to check that box right there. Add this data to the data model. New worksheet, click OK. Now, client name, client name. Watch what happens when I double click cell B3, scroll to the bottom. There's your distinct count. So watch it go from 11 to 8. Cool. Example number two, but before I do example number two, I know someone's going to say this. Chris, why don't you just highlight these, copy them, paste them, go to data and do a remove duplicates. The reason why is when I click OK, that's actually correct. There's nothing wrong with that. But if I use a pivot table and the data changes, the pivot table will change. That's why I prefer the pivot table method for the distinct count. Now here comes example number two. Before I show you this example, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to my YouTube channel, but I was in there the other day. The videos I put on LinkedIn, I can usually do maybe two or three a week, but I'll upload multiple videos to YouTube. I noticed that I'm getting close to 500 training videos. So I got a little bit excited about that because I want to get 500 videos now. I didn't, used to not care. So if you want to sign up for my YouTube channel, there'll be a link at the end of this video. So I put the stuff that's in yellow and green, I did that myself. So there's client ABC. We only have two products, A and B. They ordered product A. They ordered product A again. A a third time and they ordered product B. And then I didn't do the other ones, but there's Delta and Microsoft's in there. So here we go. I'm going to do this pivot table the same way I did the last one, but I'm going to put it here on this worksheet. It's just easier to keep up with. There's no other reason. Got to check that box right there. If you don't check that box, distinct count does not work. Here we go. Client names. Product. I've got 11, and I've got 11 over here. Double click, count of product, distinct count. I should get the number eight. I do, two, one, one. If you're saying, Chris, there's a two down there, it's because I have two products. I have product A and I have product B. So watch this. I'm going to change that to product G. Back in the pivot table, I need to refresh it. That number should change to three when I refresh. And it does. So I have three distinct products, 
but they're the clients and the number of times they ordered a distinct product. So that's actually a pretty cool trick. Anyway, thank you for your time. Sign up for my YouTube channel. Have a great Sunday.